You are now tuned into gutter. Now y'all know Saint. I can't stand this woke liberal, you know, all inclusive culture. Y'all know I can't stand. It. You know, once upon a time ago, you know, being considered woke was being considered righteous. You know, if you have, you had a righteous mindset. Now these Democrats and the far left and you know all these you know, liberal cats then to hijack the term woke, you know, the term woke. And now it's being, you know, tossed around as this libertarian Democrat word now. Yeah, you know I mean, it's it's crazy, man. So the stuff I'm about to say about, you know, brother uh, Vadi Bakum, you know, comes from a place of love and observation of what I've been, you know, noticing from him throughout the years. Now, the brother can preach. The brother is a well you know, well-spoken preacher. You know what I mean? And a lot of stuff he says, I agree with. You know, you know, he breaks down the scriptures. You know, he simplifies the scriptures. You can understand the gospel when he preached the gospel. When, when he preached the gospel. But here's the thing: the issues I have with Vadi is why he's always bringing up black people's struggles, black people's issues, and black leaders. You know, around you know, predominantly white folk, white churches and, and circles and even, you know, in the Christian circles. You know, why do he always talk down on, you know, black leaders? And he's always talking crazy about slavery and, and what black, you know, he rarely touch on what black people, you know, went through. You know, he talk about, you know, black church leaders and black political leaders and, you know, and all that stuff. But he's always doing it in a predominantly white setting and, you know, to a predominantly white audience man y'all remember this when he said this about dr king but there was a man who has a monument now in washington dc that man was a neo-marxist and a socialist and a pastor and a tremendous orator and his name was dr martin luther king jr he was wrong on the gospel and he was wrong on worldview as a liberal marxist Yeah, man. I, you know what I mean, when he said that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, man. You know what I mean? Brother, you know, Vadi, you know, has a history of talking down on, you know, other prominent black leaders in front of white, a white audience, man. It, that, in, in, in congregants. It, it, it really bothers me, you know what I mean? And I get it on one hand because that's his base. That's his, that's his core audience. That's, you know, they made him, you know, in essence, you know. But in my honest opinion, he's doing exactly what he say a lot of other preachers do when, you know, when they start pandering and hooting and hollering and all that stuff. He's actually pandering to him. He's doing it, you know, to hit the audience that he, you know, that he speaks to just in a different way. You know what I mean? But, but anyway, man, so recently, Brother K-Dub over there at All Things Theology, you know, who, by the way, by the way, makes good content. Y'all go follow him. Y'all been, fo been, fo been following him for a very long time. You know what I mean? I'm going to um, link his, his channel down below. But K-Dub did a reaction to Vody Bacham's, you know, old videos. Now, the message, you know, the premise of the whole message was reconciliation. You know, which was, it, it, was, a, it was a good message, an all-around good message. However, right, the message was very disingenuous in my in my opinion. The illustration, you know, that he that he correlated the message with was was way off in my honest opinion. Now let me, you know, let me, you know, after we after we play this clip, you know, what I mean, I'ma show you, I'ma show y'all why where I'm coming from. This was in the height of a lot of madness going on with the woke stuff, but nevertheless, man, I remember listening to this sermon and it literally had me over there just Put a put a tissue in the chat right now, cause this sermon, guys, I'm I'm warning you. By the end of this, you will be in tears, in a good way. It will be in a good way. So, if you're ready, let's get into this. Let's go. Because in order to understand the magnitude of the reconciliation, you have to understand the magnitude of the division. I want you to understand that the division that God overcomes here is more significant than anything that we face because race is arbitrary. Racial classifications are not real classifications. There is but one race. 
there's virtually no genetic difference between us. By the way, if we were not of the same race, we couldn't reproduce with one another. There is one race. We have the same original parents. We're a multiple ethnicities, but one race. And the racial distinctions between us are arbitrary distinctions based on certain features that we have, but not based on real differences. They are arbitrary. And sometimes we see these when the Hutus and the Tutsis experience genocide in Rwanda. People look at that and when we go, well, I, I don't get that. These people look the same to me. Do you realize that the genetic difference between the Hutus and the Tutsis is small, but the genetic difference between white people and black people is almost as small. Now, although, you know, I agree with, you know, what he said, I agree with what K-Dub said, there, you know what I mean? I, I do agree, you know, to some extent, but the issue again I have is his preaching is, is almost like, to me, it's like confirming their biases that they already have against black people. You see what I'm saying? He brought up slavery. He brought up the Hutis and the Tutsis and um and all that, and, you know, and, and the stuff that they experienced, the genocide that they experienced in uh, Rwanda. And, you know, he did all that. How come, my question is, how come he didn't use what happened here in America? That's part of that, you know, look, genocide happened all over the world. Genocide also happened here in America. How come he didn't bring up the genocidal stuff that these the, the forefathers of America did to blacks? You see what I'm saying? Like, that, that, that's what I'm saying. A lot of this stuff was disingenuous. Now I know some, somebody might say, oh, that's his message. That's the, that's the direction he wanted to go. But here's the thing, there's genocide that happened here on his own, so, the soil he's on. How come he couldn't, how come he couldn't parallel that sermon to something that we all can identify with because this is a part of the history that, you know, where, where are we from? You see what I'm saying? Yes, the message, you know, he preached on was, you know, based around, based around reconciliation and it's a very needed preaching, but brother, brother Bauckham, in my honest opinion, is being very disingenuous in his approach and how he did this. You know what I mean? He, he it, it, that's just in my honest opinion. Now, here's why I say he was being disingenuous and y'all heard a piece of it. You know, when was the last time you heard Vody, Vody Bauckham talk down on and, and, and say all the derogatory stuff that the American forefathers did to blacks in America? When last time y'all heard him say something like that or anybody in those circles say something like that, you know, or, or talk down on the forefathers? You, you, you don't. When was the last time you heard Vody Bauckham talk down on all the egregious things that the Germans did to the Jews? Oh, yeah, that, listen, that's why I said his, his argument is disingenuous. He went to the Rwandans, which was people of color, the Hutus and the Tutsis, and then he started talking about slavery. Listen, look, he went to black genocide and stuff that black people did to black people, but he don't talk about what these non-black people did to black people or what they even did to themselves through the Jew with the Germans and the Jews. That's what I'm saying. His argument is disingenuous because he have to, you know, confirm the biases of his congregation and of the people that he's speaking to. And like I said, on one hand, I get it, but I don't think preachers should be doing stuff like this. You know what I mean? When it comes to slavery, right? Woke culture, black pastors and anything else related to, you know, black people, Vod Vody Bach, I keep going, I'm about, I, I keep calling, <laughs> y'all, I keep going, about to call him Body. <laughs> Vody, you know, has a lot of stuff to say about us black people to his white audience. It, uh, yo, uh, am I the only one that noticed that? I can't be the only one that noticed that. Like I said, this is no shot to Brother Vody. I'm just, you know, this just pretty much like an open re open rebuke I and mean, just a conversation that if you, if you haven't noticed, and I'm not trying to make this racial or anything because, you know what I mean, ultimately God want us all, he wished that none should perish but have everlasting life. Uh, this is not a, this is not a daggone, you know, trying to divide thing. This is just an observation of what I'm noticing from the brother uh, Vadi Bakum. Now again, what he said in that message was a good message, you know. We can't throw that away. But the way he speak was speaking and preaching threw me off. Mainly because 
you know, it sound like he was insinuating black people are the racist and black people are the problem. <laughs> Don't listen. Am I bugging y'all? <laughs> For real, am I bugging? I, look, look, listen, I study patterns and behaviors. His pattern and his behavior is that of almost like subtly because he's a well good speaker, you know, it almost like blames black people for the conditions that we're in now. Now, yes, you know, uh, we we play a we played a part, but a lot of this stuff was strategically done. I ain't even gonna get into that. You know what I mean? I'm gonna link a video I did right here. I'm gonna link the video, you know what I mean, to the did the video I did with him and um your boy Johnny Mac. Y'all go watch that. I got it in detail on that. Now check this out. I'm gonna play another clip. I'm gonna play another clip where you know where I believe the semantics merry-go-rounds you know he started to do. Now in the beginning he said, you know, there is you know there is no race but the human race. So he, you know, he pretty much saying that, you know, we are one. I get it. That's what a lot of people say, you know, to to ignore the stuff that's going on with black people. That's what they say. That's their, you know, that's their, you know, deviated type of, you know, wordplay. Then he said, black and white folk distinctions are small and arbitrary. I, oh, I get that. I get it. Then he said, you know, Jew and Gentile distinguishments are established by God and not arbitrary. The right? difference between Jew and Gentile was established by God himself and was not arbitrary, but real. If God can reconcile those who have real and God ordained distinctions between them, he can certainly reconcile people who have arbitrary and artificial differences and distinctions between them. Right. It, it, it's not just that the Gentiles were outsiders related to another ethnic group. It's not just that Gentiles were separated from the cultural hegemony, if you will, it's not just that there were systems that were oppressing them. It's not just that they didn't have access to wealth. It was, you are alienated from God and from Christ. Now check this out. Isn't Jew and Gentile still human? I mean, Jew and Gentile is still human beings. Their distinctions has nothing to do with being a human. Their distinctions is that of a spiritual origin, have nothing to do with uh, uh, being a human. See, body in this sermon, because it's cleverly put together, cleverly put, put together, body mixed physical distinctions between black and white people with spiritual distinctions of the Jew and Gentile in, in his illustration, which I believe is a bad illustration. Very bad because one is doing with the physical because physically the Jew and Gentile is no different. They are human beings. Spiritually, they are different Jew and Gentile because of, you know, of their worship to God. You see what I'm saying? Now, spiritually, Jews and Gentiles are distinct when it comes to the things of God. I, I know Vadi understands this, man. I, I, I know he does. Now, you know, when it comes to physical, like I just said, they are the same. Now, if I'm hearing Vadi correctly, right, in his own illustration, it's like him saying whites, white folk is righteous, meaning the Jews. Blacks are unrighteous, meaning the Gentiles. Now, listen, listen, I am not insinuating that, you know, he's trying to cause a further division. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying his illustration was off to me. Now, I know that's probably not what body was getting at but from my observation that's how he's coming off that's just that just me just 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 because the correlations don't you can't correlate how can you say on one hand you know there's only one race but the human race but then you just made a distinction between jew and gentile and then said god you know orchestrated that no that was that was spiritual that wasn't physical Jew and Gentile didn't have no physical distinctions other than, you know, their their tribe or wherever they was part of at that time. It had nothing to do with, they. at, at the end of the day, they was humans. You see what I'm saying? Now, I ain't gonna go down that, that rabbit hole because y'all already, I, just, I think I said everything I need to say just to, just to help y'all understand where I was coming from. The rest of the message was great. 
The rest of the message was great on reconciliation. Uh, Y'all know I have the more project, the Ministry of Reconciliation Enrichment. You know, I'm all for rec reconciliation. Reconciliation is needed. You know what I mean? I, I preach reconciliation. I'm all for reconciliation. My only issue with this message was, you know, the co he was doing confirm confirmation bias to his audience, and and it really bothered me that you know that he don't really bring up american history or american forefathers and every time he have you know some his messages he always putting in you know stuff with black people to a white audience to me that's just that's disingenuous because how come you're not bringing up their history of their anyway man y'all already i said all i had to say man make sure y'all subscribe to the channel make sure y'all like Share this out to a friend. Tell a friend who will tell a friend who will tell the next to Ken. Gut and Saints back at it again, man. I see you on the next one. And stick around for these last announcements. Cashmerch.com Vintage Saint Collection Cutter and Saint Abstract Collection Shop now at Cashmerch.com The greatest spitting, I tell them I'm Christ like they envision modern Christian. I tell them I'm nothing like the conditions that I'm living. I preach Christ, we ain't fake delivering this. Candy man, as soon as they know. it's not about how much Bible chapter and verse you know, it's about how much Bible you willing to obey.